you deserve the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters in the Lord. This morning, I want to run up my teachings for the whole week, dealing with money and Christianity. I hit the subject as a hindrance, as one of the main impediment or thing that can stand on the way for a person to miss heaven. Not that it can, but it had caused many people to miss heaven. And it is not going to do otherwise unless our attitude towards it changes. We've considered so many things in regards to what money is to us. A sister friend of mine sends me a message. And I believe that message is going to prompt me to teach the last bits. Maybe today will be the end or I will see where, how far the Holy Spirit will take us. Today I want to cover Christianity and finances. What does God say about a child of God? How to deal with money? Basically, the Lord want us to honor him with our substances god want us to serve him with our substances why because everything that we have it is he who has given them to us and since he has given us everything that we have god expects us to give it back to him so giving is what we're going to talk about in the first place we're going to talk about three four things here giving lending to god whenever we give to god what does it mean what does the Bible talks about giving to God or giving to others? Christianity has turned away from being uh, a relationship, but it has become a money making. The Lord Jesus wanted us to serve him with our substances, but money shouldn't become the main object. It should become subject, not objectively. See, objectively, people are just uh, portraying and, and, and focusing on money. But basically, money shouldn't become the pursuit of Christianity. But look as if nothing can be done or could be done in the past and at present without money. So giving to the work of God is a high requirement. If a Christian doesn't give to God and the ministry of God, whom do you want to support the church? And basically, any money that we give to God, we lend to him. We give it to him as something that is credited into our accounts. So I want to focus on that, that you be a cheerful giver in a church. It's very, very necessary. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 10, this is what God said, Give generously to him and do so without grudging heart. Then because of this, the Lord your God will bless you in all your works and everything that you put your hand on. So basically, we, whenever we give to God, we open up the door of God to bless us. When a Christian gives his money to God, God will bless him. When you give your money to the devil, Satan will curse you. But when you give to God, God will bless you. The same Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 17. Every man shall give as he is able, as you are able, according to the blessings of the Lord your God, which he has given you. So you give part to what God has given to you to him. You don't go and borrow and give it to God. You don't send credit card to church. <laughs> if you don't have money, don't give money. Don't send credit card. God is not interested about your money. He's interested about your hearts. What he has not given to you, if you give it to him, he doesn't like it. Whatsoever God has not blessed you with, he doesn't want it from you. I was dealing with a friend, a, a, a WhatsApp friend, and I saw something that was very, very skeptic. And I was trying to correct him. And he was going wide and wide. Eventually, we need to break and then cut off from each other. I saw him manipulating certain things. I said, brother, be very serious and be very careful and turn away from this deception. And he didn't ad understand me. God is not requesting anything from us that he has not given. God is not calling you as a prophet if he has not anointed you as a prophet. I'm going to nation and lying and shaking hands and doing all kinds of gimmick. That is not of God. That is not of God. I questioned the brother integrity and straight away he was paranoid. And he has to be because somebody needs to confront falsehood and fake people all over the world. God is truthful and let the devil be a liar. First Chronicles chapter 29 verse 9. 
Then the people rejoiced because they had offered so willingly. So everything that we are giving to God, we need to give it willingly. It's not being forced. Christianity, we must give willingly unto God. Don't, don't be enticed. Don't be forced. Don't be persuaded. Don't be pushed. Don't be bargained. Give from your heart. Give from your heart. And that is a genuine giver. We are allowed to give. We must give. But it must come from our hearts. And it must come from what God has blessed us with. No, go and borrow money. No, go and, 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 and use credit card. What? 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 Oh my God. Why should you serve God with credit card? That money doesn't belong to you. You want to buy a blessing? When a pastor tells you, bring a credit card and give your offering, that person is a thief and arm robber because he is allowing you to enter into debt. Be sensible and be knowledgeable. Serve God with wisdom. Give willingly, not grudgingly. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 to 10. Honor the Lord from your wealth, from your wealth, from your wealth, not from your debts, <laughs> not from your credit, from what you have. Honor the Lord uh, from your wealth and from the first of your produce. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats would overflow with new wine. Honor God with what he has given unto you, not what he has not given unto you. That you receive an abundance. God want to bless us abundantly because He can always outgive, but give only what God has given unto you. This is the first thing I want to say. Proverbs chapter number three, verse twenty-seven: Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to do so. Don't withdraw your money. Don't withdraw your hands from God. When it is being tested, because everything that God has given to us, he has given to us for a test. God blesses us to test our heart if we are willing to give it to him. And we must be able to give to God. We must be able to God. So he said, don't withhold your hands from him, whom the money is due. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 to 25. There is one who is scattered and yet increases all the more. And there is one who withholds what it justly do, and yet it results only in wants. The generous man will be prosperous, and he who wants her will himself be watched. I think you don't need much explanation here. Whatsoever well, you give to God, you increase it. Whatsoever well, you give to God is like sowing a seed. Whatsoever well, you give to God is like you're watering. You can give to God, or you can give to people in the name of God. When I'm saying giving to God, it's not necessarily giving to a pastor. Giving to the needy. Giving to people who want to serve God. Empower them to serve God. If you have something to give to somebody in the name of God, it's a blessing. It's not always that you need to give money to pastors. No, 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 no. Give to the needy. The orphans and the widows. The prisoners. The least uh, 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 advantaged people. They don't have much resources. And you, God, I bless you. Bless them and God will bless you. But always let God lead you to give. Let God touch your hearts. Other than that, you won't, you won't rip any good thing out of it. Yeah? Give where God wants you to give. Don't give just anyhow. Give only when God touches your heart. As God touches your heart generously, you must bless others and give to others. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 9. He who is generous will be blessed. For he gives some of his food to the poor. Did you hear that? You give some to the poor and God will bless you. The pastor is not poor. <laughs> the bishop is not poor. However, if you're giving to a man of God who is distributing the money to the needy people, because that was how the church is supposed to be. It's supposed to be a distribution center. The people will give their, bring their resources together and the pastor will give to individual as they need. That, but this is not the case today. This is not the case today. A young lady went to South Arabia and labored and sent her money to the pastor to take care of it for her. And when the young lady came, it became a trouble between her and the pastor. For the pastor to give the money back to her was a big problem. She paid tight out of it and said, keep this one for me. Do you know the pastor that you are giving your money to? to? 
Be careful. Proverbs 28, verse 27. He who that give to the poor would never want. But he who that shut his eyes will have much many curses. So giving to God and giving to people who are in need, God would always bless you for that. Matthew chapter 6, verse 3 to 4. But when you give to the poor, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. In other words, whenever we are giving to the poor, we shouldn't make an announcement. And neither should we make public sure of it. Media need to come and feature it. Then we have nothing. We have received our reward already. Whenever we are giving, we shouldn't allow anybody to know that we have given to this sister, we have given to this brother. No, we shouldn't mention names. We can say that we've been giving out, which is also not necessary. But sometimes it empower people for us, for them to know transparency. When people give money to a pastor, they want you to give a rather accountability. And I tell people all the time, this money when you give, it goes to this person. I'm just coming from work. I'm just coming from work. Last time when I finished teaching straight away, I jumped into the car. I tell people all the time, I'm not lying. So the money that people are giving to this ministry, go back into the ministry. And I want people always be aware. Yeah? So whenever you are giving to your money to a man of God who knows how to handle God's money, you are blessed. Mm. Hallelujah. I mean, yes, yes. Also, I realize once our thankfulness and praise go to coming back to us and reward glory to God. Yes, hallelujah. God reward a cheerful giver. And with everything that we give back to God, God will press it down, shake it together, and give it to our bosom. Mark chapter 12, verse 41 to 44. And he sat down opposite to the treasure and began to observe how people were putting money into the treasury. And many rich people were putting in large sum. A poor widow who came up with the two small copper coin, which amount to the cents, calling his disciples to him, he said unto them, Truly say unto you, this poor widow puts in more than all that everybody have contributed to the treasury. For they all put in out of their abundance, out of their abundance, the surplus. But she, as a poor widow, puts in all that she owed. So that is how it is. God love the cheerful giver and the giving that comes from your heart. God is not in, uh, much interested about the quantity, but the quality of your giving. The quality of your giving. A sister recently called me and said, Brother Gabriel, I have received, um, I've put tithes into this account. It wasn't much, very small amount, but I was so happy. So happy that she was so generous. She said, I received this amount and I paid tithe of this. So God bless you, darling, for being faithful. It shouldn't be. I'm not expecting something. God is not expecting something big. But something little, being faithful a little, God will bless you with much. Hmm? So your money given to God shouldn't be anything big. But it should be something that's coming from your heart. If he has given you abundance, give abundance and God will bless you. I don't give to a man who is going to buy a replay and enrich himself and begin to brag. I have this, I have that, I have that. No. Give to a ministry that is promoting the kingdom of God. Winning souls. Buying Bible and sending the trust, the gospel trust. Let's make an investment. Let's make an investment in the kingdom of God. And I tell you, every money that you are giving to God, God is using that money to build your house in heaven. Every, God spoke to me clearly. He told me, Gabriel, every money that you are giving into my kingdom, so giving is something, I'm, I'm just like that. I just, I just give to God. I can't be bothered at all because I know he's using that money to build my headquarters for me in heaven. You may jealous me when you come and meet me in heaven. Brother Gabriel, why did you get this? <laughs> because I invested in that. So invest in the business of God. So this woman was a widow and she offered the widow's mites. Pastor, don't preach about that. Don't bring the widow's mites here. And some churches, you're not allowed even to put coin in. Had Jesus been in that church, I don't think that Jesus would have had any good thing to say. Giving to the kingdom of God, giving to the people who are in need, and be always be very careful. Always be very careful. Back home in Africa today, there have been so many people, understand this, there have been so many people today, they go around and uh, they pretend as if they are blind. Be very careful. Be very, very careful. That's what I'm saying. Let the Lord lease you. 
let God guide you. People pretend to be blind. These are demonic people. So be very, very careful before you give to a blind person, not a type of blind person. Today, false prophets and demonic and idolatrous and all courts people pretend to be blind. And when you give your money to them, you are gone. That's why I'm saying let God touch your hearts. Let God touch your hearts. Know the specific person that you are always giving to. I will master a specific person that will give my money to. If I know that that person is needy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, after all things is settled, go and check if they are still there. Some of them, they are millionaires. <laughs> so be careful. Let God guide your heart. We, you can never miss a widow. You can never miss an orphan. Yeah? So people who are on the street, be very careful. Not all of them deserve to get that money. Be careful. Some of them are lazy. I remember in Germany, I used to go on the streets and we distribute in the gospel track and I met these hippie people, these beautiful children who have just gone way out. And most of them are millionaires children, lazy children who doesn't, who don't want to work. I met one and I asked her, why are you sitting here? She said, why should I go and work if there are some people who have had enough that they should give me some to eat? You see the mindset that people are begging on the streets. It's very bad. Some people deserved to be where they are because their mindset need to be changed. Some of them situation has brought them there. So such person you can assist, but let God guide your heart. In Luke chapter 6 verse 30, give to everyone who asks of you and whosoever takes away what is yours, do not demand it back. That's what the Lord is saying. When people are in need and they take something from you, Jesus said, give it to them. So given there are so many quotations that I need to jump over. There are so many quotations. But let me read James chapter 2, verse 15 to 16. If a brother or a sister is without clothing and in need of a daily food, and one of you say to them, go in peace, be warmed and be filled, and you do not give them what is necessary for their body, what is the use of it? If a person in need comes to you, among Christian them, some of them don't, don't have money, they don't have even anything. A child of God, you need to bring this person home, Give him or give her some of your clothes and stop stop uh, gossiping and, and backbiting against them. Some people come into the Lord and they don't have enough. And you have God, I bless you. Why don't you give some to them for the benefits? So in other words, whenever we give to God, it's an investment. Every money that we give to God, we are investing in our future. I want you to understand. We invest Proverbs chapter 15 verse 22, without consolation, plants are frustrated by with many consolation they succeed. Only when we give to God, then there's going to be success. Proverbs 24, 27, prepare your work outside and make it ready for yourself in the field. Afterward, then build your house. Make an arrangement, invest, put something in place for your future. Don't eat everything today. Don't eat everything today. Sow something. Sow something for your future. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 20. A faithful man will abound with blessing, but he who doesn't make haste to build rich will not go unpunished. You may ask me, Brother Gabriel, why is only Proverbs? Because Solomon was the richest person and he revealed the secret of his riches. He revealed the secret of his riches. And God used Solomon to teach us a lesson how a man can be rich and can still be sincere to God, and how riches can also destroy a person's hearts. Be careful. Be careful because money is a very dangerous devil. The spirit behind money is a very gigantic spirit that can destroy every person. It doesn't matter how far you have gone. Because money, is when you, any person that has money, the next thing is pride. Pride is the next thing. Ego-centered. Be very careful. We'll talk about all these things in the next segments. Proverbs 13, verse 11. Wealth obtained by fraud dwindlings, but the one who gather by labor increases. Wealth acquired by dubious means doesn't stand. It doesn't remain. So whenever we are getting money, we need to know that we are making investments. So the way we acquire the money will depend the blessings attached to it. Proverbs 19, 2. Also, it is not good for a person to be without knowledge. And he who that hurries his footsteps errs. Be careful. Don't run. Don't run in this life. Don't run. Don't run. Take your time. Save money. 
and then invest in a good thing. If you are making investments, ask God to safeguard you. You can't invest your life in anything. You can't invest your money in any business. I have made that mistakes. I'm not a very good business person. So anytime I wanted to invest money in my in business, it failed. I don't know if it's a, a German who says a strafe. <laughs> if it's a punishment that God will punish me because he doesn't want me to do money, money, money thing. Any people are making investment if I go there to backfire. He said, remain and do my business. So I can't advise you much how to make an investment. But everything that you want to do, let God guide you. See the guidance and the counsel of God in every step that you take. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Understand this. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2. Also, it is not good for a person to be without knowledge. And he who that hurry his footsteps will err. Be careful. Don't hurry in your footsteps. Ecclesiastes 11, 2. Divide your portion to seven or even to eight. For you do not know what misfortune may occur on earth. There is a proverb, don't put all your eggs in one basket. It is very important that you don't eat your capital. Sometimes God gives us a seed. And instead of sowing that seed, we, we consume it. We don't consume our capital. We don't consume our capital. Therefore, be very, very careful. Know the seed and separate the seed from the fruits or the crops. Separate them. Any good farmer will separate the seed and put some aside that in due season he will plant it. In Matthew chapter 25, the Bible talks about a man who went on a journey and he gave gifts to his servants. And they never knew that what the, their master was giving to them, it belongs to them. Understand that any money that God has given to you, it belongs to you forever. If you give it back to God, if you invest in what God has asked you to invest, that money will be yours forever. We are not going to use money in heaven. But mind you, any person that tells you I have a vision or a dream or revelation that she was taken to heaven and she saw money or he saw money being used, they go away from such ministry. It's very dangerous. Very dangerous. That is demonic ministry. Money is only being spent here on earth because heaven we are not going to buy, we are not going to sell. So we need money here on earthly things. So any person that tells you that, I, and any pastor that promoted that pastor is a witch, is a demonized. I had a, one of our Ghanaian minister that um, she, he was entertaining that, and that one of, the, of his members went to heaven and currency money was being used. The devil is a liar. This is fake. This is fake. This is fake. There is no scripture base that we are going to use money in heaven. <laughs> so read the mighty chapter 25. It tells you the master who gave uh, gifts or talents to his servants. And when the time came, he called all of them to bring what they have. So understand that whenever we give to God, we are investing. Whenever we give to God, we are lending. We are lending. To lend means to give to somebody that you take it back tomorrow. Let's see. Esther chapter 22 verse 25. If you lend money to my people, to the poor among you, you are not to act as a creditor to him. You shall not charge him interest. Christians, whenever we give money out, we shouldn't charge interest. Meaning that a Christian shouldn't do money business. We shouldn't add interest when we lend to somebody. When I was a little boy and go to secondary school, that was one of my problems. My father was at that time a pensioner. Money wasn't at home. So the only time that money, money comes is annually as a cocoa farmer when they harvest their cocoa. So daddy will go and borrow money and then they will give him, if somebody give him five, next year he will pay ten. Hmm. People are wicked. The rich people are very wicked. They will double it. A Christian shouldn't do that. Give to a person where he's in need. Bring it back. But some Christian don't bring it back. That's also the painful aspect of it. Somebody who have helped you in time of trouble. And you take that money and you don't give it back. It's a curse. That's all I can say. It's a curse. You will never prosper. You will never be. It will never be well with you. Be careful. People block Christians of doing act of kindness to others. 
There are so many Christians. Oh my God. They are not Christian, by the way. They go to church. They are not. So I don't want to go there. No Christian will borrow money from somebody and will not pay it back. No Christian will do that. Because there is a curse attached to that. Leviticus chapter 25, verse 35 and 37. Now is the case. Countryman of yours becoming poor and his means with regard to your father. Then you are to sustain him like a stranger or a sojourner that he may live with you. Do not take Osri's interest from him, but reverence your God that your countryman may live with you. You shall not give him your silver at interest, nor your food for a gain. So here he's also saying that it was a law. According to the Jewish tradition, according to the children of Israel, they were not supposed to give anything for interest. They are not supposed to give out and expect interest out of it, interest-free. So that means in the land of Israel, money Money making wasn't something that was encouraged. If you give, don't expect something, uh, interest back. Deuteronomy chapter 23, Deuteronomy 15, let's do the 15 verse 8, 15, 8. But you shall freely open your hand to him and shall generously lend him sufficiently for his need and whatever he lacks. A child of God must be able to help a brother or a sister. You must be. Many will take it for granted. Many will take it for granted. And some of the time, people whom they receive much, they are very stingy. I know humanity are very selfish. Human beings are very selfish. However, we shouldn't deny people when they are in need. Learn to them. And whenever you learn to a person who cannot pay you back, you're learning to God. Whenever you learn to a person who cannot give you interest, you're learning to God. Redeem somebody from his financial or her financial difficulties and God will bless you. You shall not charge interest to your countryman. You shouldn't do that. Deuteronomy 25, 24 verse 10. 24 verse 10. When you make your neighbor a loan of any sort, you shall not enter his house to take his pledge. So whenever you make money, you lend money, don't go and say, please write this thing down. Sign a contract. It is unfair. Let a person come and do it honor. And when a person entrusts you with that trust and confidence, brother, don't disappoint God. Sometimes when God blesses us, God becomes disappointed. Mm. Mm. Can God trust you? Can God trust you? Everything that God has entrusted to you, it is not for you, for the benefit of others. The day that you begin to understand that, it changes every aspect. So you give without worrying. Because whenever we give to God, we learn to God. We invest in our, 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 in, our, in our future life and we learn also to God. Let's do Psalm 15 verse 5. He doesn't put out his money at interest, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things will never be shaken. He is a man that God is seeking for. A man who doesn't give his money for interest, doesn't give that people will bow before him. That people will, uh, he will become a master. He doesn't give to enslave others, but he gives to promote the well-being of other people. This is the heart that God is searching for. Are you having the heart? Are you a giver? A cheerful giver that is promoting the kingdom of God. Psalm number 37 verse 20 says, All day long he is grush, graciously and land, and his descendants are blessed. This is a man that God is looking for. A man who is learning to people. And God will abundantly bless that person. There shall never be any good thing that God will help from those people that are doing, giving generously to, in the name of God. Give generously in the name of God. Give generously and God will bless you. Psalm number 37 verse 26. 37, 26, all day long, he is graciously and land. You give to people and God will bless you. Proverbs 28, verse 8, he who increases his wealth by interest and also gather it for him who is graciously to the poor. Do you get it? Don't increase your wealth in this area. Don't increase. Don't increase your wealth. Don't gather for the interest of the future. 
that people will enjoy what you are working and laboring for. Give freely. Now, Hamiah chapter 5, verse 1 to 13 talks about some stories. Let's go pick a few words. Now, there was a great outcry of the people and of their wives against their Jewish brother. For there were those who said, we, our, we, our sons and authorities are many. Therefore, let us get grain that we may eat and live. There were others who said, we are mortgaging our field our vineyard and our houses that we might get grain because of the farming. Also, there were those who said, we have borrowed money for the king tax on our field and our vineyard. Now our flesh is like the flesh of our brother. Our children like their children. Yet behold, we are forcing our sons and our daughters to be slaves. And some of our neighbors are forced into bondage already. And we are helpless because our field and our vineyard belong to others. You see, there are people, when they give, it leaves them forever and ever. And these people were lamenting that instead of being generous towards them, they borrow to them and they take everything out of their hands, which is sin. God forbid that. God forbid that. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 42, Give to him who asks of you, and do not turn away from him who wants to borrow from you. Don't. Don't. If a child of God comes to you, that we need to give. Jesus said, love your enemies and do good and lend expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great. And you'll be a son or you'll be the sons of your most high. For he himself is a king to ungrateful and evil men. God, God expects people to give. God expects Christians to give. So I want you to understand whenever we give to God, God will bless us. In which way do we give? We give in thanksgiving as a form of giving thanks to God. We give as a form of pledging or giving a vow. Giving a vow. And whenever we give in that way, God will also bless us. There are many Christians, they love receiving, receiving, receiving. They don't want to give. If you are not a giving Christian, you can receive something good from God. Abstain or turn away from always want to receive, want to receive. There is a cheerful giver and there is a blessing in giving more than receiving. Mm -hmm. Let's see the, how God wants us to receive. In Ecclesiastes 5.19, Furthermore, as for every man to whom God has given riches and wealth, he has also empowered him to eat from them. And to receive his reward and rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. God wants a child of God when you give. He wants you to receive. So sometime after we have given, we need to receive also. Some of us, we don't want to receive. Some of us, we don't want to receive. We always want to give, want to give, want to give. If God has granted you the heart of you, that's fine. You are a giver. Some people are very good giver. They can give. They can give without being, being tired. <laughs> I know I'm man that he is a giver whenever somebody gives him something he's always afraid a very sincere person is always afraid to receive something and that is how a child of god you should be not being in a position always to receive no 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 no. try to give instead let your giving exceed your desire to become something you must be afraid because sometimes you don't know who is giving and you don't know on which purpose some people give to buy you some people give to control you, to, to control your life. And that is why a child of God must be very, very careful. It is very good for you to work hard, for you to earn your money than receiving from people. I'm always afraid. I'm always afraid. I'm always afraid. I don't want to talk much about me. So let me jump up. John chapter 3 verse 27. John answered and said, And man can receive nothing unless what has been given unto him from above. It's only God that can give. He's a giver. And you can't outgive God. And I have seen that any giver will always prosper. God will never let you lack anything. God will never let you lack anything. Sometimes you'll be amazed. People will come to you and be amazed. Why are you having everything? Because you are a giver. There is a secret that Christians haven't come to know. If you become a giver, God will bless you. God will water your land. He will water your soil. Abundantly, you will always receive you always receive. People might not bless you, but God will employ you. You get some job and do it, and there is always enough money. Acts chapter 20, verse 35. In everything, I'll show you that by working hard, 
In this manner, you must help the weak. Do you hear that? Working hard, you must help the weak. A child of God, hard working. Christian must not be afraid of work. I hate lazy people. I hate them. Because lazy people are always want to receive, want to receive, want to receive. They don't want to work out and help others. Work hard. Work hard. Lazy people can never make heaven. Lazy people can never make heaven. In everything, I show you that by working hard in this manner, you must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. He himself said, it is more blessing to give than to receive. It is more blessing to give. So a child of God must be in a position of hard working and blessing the poor and the needy. Don't become one of the poor people around you. Don't become. It is a curse. It is a curse. Taking money that you don't deserve to take. People have all kinds of dubious means. Bringing lies and get money. Hey, you are being cursed. You don't know what you are doing. You don't know. You are look, using dubious means to get money. Very dangerous. Don't do that. Don't do that. Hmm. I'm afraid for people. Oh. First Corinthians 9, 10 to 11. Oh, he's he. He is speaking all together for our sake. Yes, for our sake it was written because the plowman ought to plow in hope and the treasure to treasure in the hope of sharing the crops. If we swap, if you sow spiritual things in you, it is too much if we reap material things from you. Christians must sow spiritually. Everything that we are given, we are given to God. Whenever we sow we sow to God to receive and we sow to save. Whenever we sow to God, we are saving that money. We are lending, we are investing, we are sowing to receive and we are sowing to save. We are sowing to save. Proverbs 21 verse 5. The plans of the diligent lead surely to advantage, but everyone who is hasty comes surely to poverty. The plans of the diligent bring him into what? Into advantage. Everything that you are doing, it is for your advantage. So don't be tired of doing good. In due season, you will reap. You will reap. There is a precious treasure, an oil in the dwelling of the wise. But a foolish man swallow it up. Proverbs 21, 20. 21, 20. There is a treasure. There is a treasure for a precious person who is always giving. And he is rendered as a wise person. But a foolish who is always using dubious means to acquire wealth is dangerous. Very dangerous. Proverbs 27, 12. A prudent man sees evil and hides himself. Naive proceed and pay the penalty. Hmm. A prudent man see evil, hide himself. But a naive fall into that pit and he destroy. Are you a naive? Are you a naive? Not every money that you need to go for. Not everything. Don't you dubious me to acquire wealth? Very dangerous. Very dangerous. This money is very, very tempting, uh, tempting thing. It will tempt you to do things that you shouldn't do. Hmm. Uh, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 24 and 25. Four things are small on earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The ants are not a strong purple, but they prepare their food in the time of summer. In the time of summer, the ant will save. Save little by little. Save little by little. Save. Savings is very good. And that's what an ant does. In summer, he saves. In winter, he just closes his door. And when you knock, he does. I'm very sorry. Water is coming here. Can I help you next time? <laughs> save. Don't eat everything. Put some. Put some. Save your money in the kingdom of heaven. Save, save your wealth. Save what God is giving to you for your future inheritance. First Corinthians, the chapter number 16, verse 2. On the first day of every week, each one of you is to put aside and save as he may prosper, so that no collection may be made when I come. Apostle Paul was encouraging giving in the church. Giving in the church is not sin. Giving to the kingdom of God is not sin. Giving to the expansion of kingdom of God is not sin. I don't believe 
that sinners should be invited to harvest time. I don't, I don't believe that. That people who are not Christian should be brought up to raise funds in the church. I don't believe that at all. Because as sinner, nothing that you have that God likes. So born again believers must be able to work out, work hard, and support the ministry of God. We shouldn't borrow from bank. A church shouldn't borrow from bank. If we don't have finances, if we don't have the means, we should live according to our means. As a Christian is not supposed to borrow from bank, so must the church not to borrow. I know certain churches, they go and, 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 and credit, go on credit and borrow money to build church house and all these things. Why do you do that? Why don't you have a place? Home sales is far better. If you can't afford, if you can't afford to buy church building, pastors, why are you doing this? And all these pastors are fake, by the way. Because if they have been led by God, God will show them not to do that. It's against the will of God. It's against the will of God. Yeah? So understand that. That we shouldn't do things that will put Christianity into shame. We shouldn't do that. Finally, we want to talk about tithes, which is one of the most difficult things in Christendom. Should we pay tithes? Does God require tithes? Oh, yes. I want to finish up with that. I want to give you scriptures that fulfill that. So I want to take my time and do that one. You know what? Giving 10%. Giving 10% to God is not sin. Giving percentage of your income to God is not sin. What the enemy have done is he have destroyed everything that will bring us blessing. And bless the God most high. Genesis chapter 14 is where tithe began. Abraham. Abraham was the first person that paid tithe to God. He paid tithe to Melchizedek. Who was God? Christ Jesus who had no father who has no mother. Abraham went to war. He went and fought and relieved his nephew, Lot. And the money, in those days, when you go for war and fight, you get wealth. And what he had, he gave 10%. After he has given some to the servant that he hired them and went to that war, he gave 10% to Melchizedek. He paid tithe to God. God didn't refuse that. God didn't reject that. Anything that God accepted in the Old Testament, he accepted in the New Testament. Abraham, blessings am I. Abraham, blessings am I. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the evening. But when they come to tithe, the people have all kinds of arguments. There is a blessing. Anytime you give to God, there is a blessing. Consider that and stop that argument. Yes, we must pay our tithes and our offering. We must pay them. So Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. In Genesis chapter 28, Jacob, his nephew, paid tithes to God. He pledged God. He pledged. He made pledge, a vow. And then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and will make me on this journey that I take, and I will give and give me food to eat, and garment to wear, and return to my father's house in safety. Then the Lord will be my God. This stone which I have set up as a pillar will be God's house, which is Bethel. And of all that you give me, I will surely give you 10%. And Jacob did that. It wasn't sin. If tithe was sin, Abraham sinned then. If tithe was sin, then Jacob sinned. Don't allow the church of Christ or the assemblies of God who are any Christian who doesn't pay tithe will never make heaven. And any pastor who preaches against tithe is going to hell. Be careful because that is the way God finances his ministry. That is the way God finances his ministry. A very delicate issue. Don't, don't trade with your tithes if you're a child of God. If you're a child of God. If somebody brings tithes, you know what? I just handed it over to my wife. She saved the church ministry money. I don't touch it. Say here. 
Take it. I'm very cautious. I'm very, very... If somebody doesn't pay, that person is scarce. And if they pay to you and pastor, you eat it. <laughs> Are you going to be free? <laughs> pastor, if you don't, if you want money, don't, don't venture with God's money. Oh. I'm very, very careful with God's money. If somebody doesn't pay tight, he's scarce. And if people take pay tight and you pastor, you eat it. Don't you know that you're under curse? Unless God tells you, don't go to work. When people bring that site, you can use it. Unless God tells you that. If not, God have not told me. So the tithes, I don't go there. I'm very, very careful. I want to make heaven. For money's sake. Oh, I better go and beg. Than eating money that belongs to God. I better, oh, and conscience is clear. Pastors who are running for tithe, I pity you. Hmm. Yo, Esther chapter 23 verse 19. You shall bring your choice first fruits of your soil into the house of the Lord, your God. You are not to boil a young goat in the milk of his mother. It became a law that the children of Israel need to bring their sides to the house of God. That there shall be abundant bread. I will go back to that. I will finish with that. The Levites, were, when they distributed land, the Levites couldn't have a land. So their portion was the tithes. So every time that people harvest, they brought, in those days, it wasn't money. It was gold, sheep, flock, wheat, crop, anything, anything. You bring 10%. You bring the first harvest to God. Bring it to God and let God will bless you. The first thing, when you give it to God, God will bless you. The first fruits, God will bless you. Do that and God will bless you. And not everywhere that God will bless you. If that minister doesn't belong to God, <laughs> you are investing in the kingdom of the devil. Many of you have invested in the kingdom of the devil in the past. And if you are not a born again believer, don't give your tithe to a ministry which is born. And a pastor, analyze that if that person is a Christian before you take his tithe. Be careful. Any person who does not belong to God, nothing that you give to God that will be, bring you blessing. Brother Gabriel, I'm going to bring you tithes. I don't need your tithes if you're not saved. Don't bring me curse. I'm not interested in that. I'm not, I'm not in need of money, to be honest with you. I'm not in need of money, to be honest with you. I lack nothing. So don't send tithes to me if you're not saved. And before a person is sent tithes, I need to know that the person is a member of our ministry. <laughs> you shall bring Leviticus chapter 27 verse 3, 30. That's all the tithes of the land of the seed of the land or of the fruits of the three is the Lord's. Do you hear that? The tithe belongs to God. Pastor, it's not yours. It's not the past, pastor's wife money. It belongs to God. Is the Lord, it is holy to the Lord. In the name of Jesus, somebody is listening to me. You are having stomach problem. I curse that stomach problem right now in Jesus' name. Right now, somebody, you are listening to me. You are having problem with your stomach. Put your hands there. Please take water for me quickly. In the name of Jesus. Take a little water and let's change it into the blood of Jesus. Somebody is going through a stomach problem right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive your healing right now. Receive your healing. I don't know why you ate. I don't know. I, I, something is chronic. The Lord is healing you right now. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. I curse that stomach ulcer. I curse that stomach pain. I curse it right now. Father, heal that person. As the person is going to drink your blood, let the person receive his her healing. His healing right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. It is done. If you are that person, you are healed right now. You shall bring the very first of your first fruit. Leviticus, all the tithes in the land belongs to God. They are the seed of the land and the fruits of the tree is the laws. It is holy unto God. It's holy unto God. If you are somebody who is going through that, please let me know. And let's give glory to the Lord. That is the Lord who is speaking. It's not me. I was talking to a brother, and he said, it's you who is thinking, I say, you don't know what you're talking about. Why should I lie? <laughs> he was doing a demonic thing, and I, I told him, immediately I watched your audio, the Lord spoke to me that what you're doing is not of him. And he said, it is your own senses. I said, my senses for where? I didn't even communicate, I said, you go away. I just want to correct you to make heaven, and you want to go to hell. That's your choice, false prophets. The devil is a liar. So the tithe belongs to God. 
We need to give it to him. Don't keep it. Don't save it. Don't give it to somebody on the street. Bring into the house of God. Where God will choose. You can be part of our ministry, but God will touch you. Bring your touch to somebody. Go ahead and do that. I'll be very happy. Do what God tells you. Don't do what you feel or what the pastor is saying. Do what God tells you. Pastor, where should the tide go? It go to a place where the word of God is, you are being fed. And it also go to a place where God will ask you to give. Hmm? I'm not jealous at all. Go and give it to a brother. Who needs it much? If God touches your heart, only when he touches your heart. Not that you want to show off. That is not good. <laughs> that is not good. Numbers chapter 18 verse 26. Moreover, you shall speak to the Levites and say to them, When you take from the sons of Israel that sight, which I have given you from them from your inheritance. Do you hear that? God gave that sight to the children of the Levites as an inheritance. When you say that sight which I've given to you as an inheritance, then you shall present an offering from it to the Lord. So even when those ministers, when they're giving tithe, they also need to pay tithe. Pastor, if God blesses you with tithe, you need to pay tithe to others. You need to pay tithe. Recently, the Lord told me to go and bless a church. I have to do it. A pastor friend. I have to do it. You need, I said, brother, God is asking me to do this for you. Unprepared. He might be shocked, but I felt deeply God was touching me. God was touching me. What I've touched my heart to give a car out. I've given cars out to people. I've done that. Not that I have abundant. God blesses me and I need to give it out. When God blesses you, some, uh, when God no, go feel that you, you can't be trapped with money. Nothing. Unless God trusts you. Hmm. Can one pay tithe to the poor or to the needy? No. You need to be, that's not. Pay tithe to the house of God. Give to the needy, give to the poor. Mm -hmm. You not, need to give another tithe. Tithe belongs to the house of God. It's only a pastor. It's only a minister, a preacher. Ministry is supposed to receive your tithe. Ministry, mm -hmm. not individual. You can give out to the needy, but the tithe... The word side, the 10% of your income need to go to the house of God. Hmm? That's clear. So, Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 22 and 23. Ye shall surely tithe all the product from what you sow, which comes out of the field every year. And also, you go and borrow money that you shouldn't pay tithe of what you borrow. The tithe should be your income. It comes from your income. Tithe is your income. What God has blessed you. It's not what you are going to borrow from somebody and you pay tight. That is not how it's supposed to be. Pastors will say, if you go and borrow, come and pay tight. Hmm. Where is the scripture base? Hmm? There is no scripture base. It says, you should pay tight of your produce from what you sow, which comes out of your field every year. You shall eat in the presence of the Lord your God and the place where he chooses to establish his name. Did you hear that? A place God, where God have chosen to establish his name, the tithe of your grain, your new wine, your oil, the firstborn of your head and your flock, so that you may learn to fear the Lord your God. You know, he's never, never mentioned only money here. Oil, grain, uh, 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 animals, everything. You pay tithe out of it. One tenth. One tenth. Deuteronomy 14, 28. 14.28 says this, When you have finished paying all the tithes of your increase in the third year, the year of Titan, then you shall give it to the Levites, to the stranger, to the orphan, and to the widow, that they may eat in your town and be satisfied. So he said, after you have paid the tithe for three years, then the next tithe is going for them. Unless God tells you to do so. Mm -hmm. Some of them you bring into the house of God that food may abide. There are some you need to give only when God directs you. I mean, there is a problem in Malachi chapter 3 that many people have said that pastors are using Malachi chapter 3. It's no basis. Well, I've read from all Revel uh, uh, Deuteronomy and Nehemiah also talk about that. Second Chronicle talk about that. Proverbs chapter 3 talks about that. Ezekiel chapter 44 verse 30 talk about that. Amos chapter 4 verse 4 talks about tithes. Nehemiah 10, 38 talks about tithes. Second Chronicle 31, 5 talks about tithes. Uh, Malachi 3, 8 to 10 talks about tithes. Because of time, I'm just going to jump through. 
Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. People are saying that in the New Testament there is no tithe. Listen to this. Now, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint and dill and commune and have neglected the weightier provision, weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. But these are things that you should have done without neglecting tithe and offering. So the Lord was rebuking them that they were paying tithes. What about gifts? Giving gifts. When God touches your heart, you give gifts, sister. When God touches your heart, anything that you're doing, let God touch you. Don't do things because you want to do it. Mm -hmm. Why do you want to give gifts? Does God touch you to do those? So go ahead and do that. Does the person need it? Is he, is she or is he in need? Do that. Go ahead and do that and God will bless you. Don't give to people who are already blessed. It's not a blessing. Give to the poor. <laughs> if you are blessing people, find a person that will be beneficiary of it. Not a person who is rich. It is like you're having a birthday and somebody will bring it and you bring it back. That is not what we're talking about here. So here the Lord was saying that the New Testament church is supposed to pay tithes. Hmm. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 to 2. Now concerning the collection of the saints, which was the tithe, the collection of the saints, which was tithe, as directed the churches of Galatia, so do you also. On the first day of every week, which is Sunday, each one of you is to put aside a save as he may prosper, so that no collection may be made. So in the New Testament church, they were collecting money also. Mm -hmm. I mean, when one receives a gift, can all that I be taken out of it? Oh, yes. Yes. When you receive a gift, you shouldn't. When you receive a gift, you shouldn't. There is no law that when you receive a gift, you should pay tithes. It's only your income, according to the word of God. But if you want to give some to God, it is not must. If you want to give some to God, that's fine. Somebody have dashed you money and say, Oh, Lord, thank you for giving me this. It is not must. We teach only what the Bible is saying. I'm going to, have to be very sensitive with this topic because many are saying whatever they want. I teach only what the Bible says. So you get me, darling? That's it. Hebrews chapter 7, 1 to 4 also talk about tithes when he was referring to Machisedek, receiving the tithes. So for this, Machisedek, king of the silent priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham as was returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him to whom also Abraham appointed a portion, a tenth part of the spoil was first of all by the translation of his name, king of righteous and then also king of Salem. The first person that side was paid to was Jesus Christ. He was called the king of Salem, king of Salem, king of righteousness, Salem, peace, Salem. The king of peace. And Jesus is that. King of righteousness. King of holiness. Let your money be given unto God every now and then. Don't withhold from God and God will bless you. He love a cheerful giver. Give and it shall be given. The same measure. Press down. Shaking together. Will man drop on your bosom. Any person that gives, God will prosper him. Become a giver. Become a cheerful giver. Pray with me. Say, Jesus, touch my heart. Let me be a giver. Let me know that whatsoever I give, it doesn't go out of my life. It's going to wait for me. I'm going to be rewarded. I'm going to be honored. I know that you are using my money to build a house for me in heaven. In Jesus' name. Giving is not only money. Giving your time. Giving your gifts. Giving uh, your clothes, your property. Everything that God touches your heart to give. Anything that goes out of your hand is going to be a reward. Giving time to pray and fasting is also a giving. There are different types of giving, not only money. Pastor talk about only money. But there are more to that. God bless you that you are being a cheerful giver. Praying, seeking the face of God, interceding for people, giving your time to fast and pray for people is also a giving. And God will reward you for that in heaven. Until we meet again, my name is Brother Gabriel. God bless you and I love you. Share this message. And let somebody also listen to that. Have a nice day. See you. Bye-bye.